How did you end up playing Wonder Woman? How did that happen? Um, well, it's kind of one thing led to the other. Um, like. I, I told it many, many times before, but I never planned on be becoming an actress. And then I had this opportunity, this casting director flew to Israel. She was looking for the Bond girl. I did the audition, didn't get the part, but through this experience, I was like, this is so much more interesting than going to law school, which I did back then. And then- You were in law school? Yeah. Oh my God. I know. Thank goodness. <laughs> Life I know. interrupts and, you know, yeah. comes in the way. Um, but then one thing led to the other and I got Fast and Furious and I started to work here. And right before I was ready to quit because I had enough of no's and almost, it's gonna be yours, it's all, it just didn't, no. And again and again, um, I had the audition for Wonder Woman. And so, then, so after Fast and the Furious, you were like, this isn't going well. I should <laughs> You were in Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah, I did, I did three, uh, three Fast and Furiouses, and it was great. It's Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and um, and um, it was great, but I wanted to do more things that are different and not just this franchise, even though it's an incredible it's great, one. right. Um, and it just, it didn't, it took time. Yeah. And for us coming here, coming to LA from Israel and, you know, changing our lives and just for the potential of, of getting something, it just got so stressful and I, be, I, I got a little bit, you know, I was like, uh, maybe it's not for me. Was your duty to simply give them a book? No. You didn't stand your ground. You, you didn't fight. Because there was no chance of changing his mind. This is Aries, and he's not going to allow a negotiation or a surrender. The millions just, of people you talked listen, about, they will die. We are My going anyway. Oh, wait a second. Because I read that you didn't want to be an actor either. Right. Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> a huge mistake. Um, I, I was going to... You know, my parents wanted me to be a doctor. Of course, and they I wanted me to be a lawyer. We have really? so much in common, Right, by the we're way. both immigrants. Exactly. We play immigrants in our movie. We both being asked all the time, how do I pronounce your name? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's pronounced a lot like it's written, actually. I read, but then I was like, it's yeah. Komail? Yes, that's right. Komail? Yes. Oh, awesome. That's the best anybody's pronounced it in a long time. Oh, yeah. with pleasure, Kumail. Oh, thank you, gal. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I just... I, they wanted I, you to be a doctor? They did, but then, you know, I decided pretty early on I didn't want to be a doctor because I didn't... It's so much... The stakes are so high. Like, if we mess up, we get another take. Yeah. Worst case scenario, our movie bombs. Yeah. With the doctor, worst case scenario is much worse, right? right. So I know I didn't want to do that. So I decided I'd do computer science because that would get me a job. And I was yeah. trying to, at that point, find a way to stay in America and uh, get a visa and stuff. But then I was doing that and I was like, I'm not good at this. And I sort of fell in love with comedy then. Like I started watching a lot of stand-up comedians. And that's when you were how old? I was, this must have been like when I was 19 or 20. I, I sort of got obsessed with stand-up and I watched a lot of stand-up. And it got to the point where I was like, I have to try this. Like. I, it didn't feel like an option to not try it, you know? So I tried it and I really loved it and that's how I broke into the entertainment world. Like, I really... And then I moved to Chicago and performed every night for, for a few yeah, years. Yeah, Chicago, the, the stand-up scene is huge. Yeah, right? it's a good So you world. were born and raised in Pakistan. That's right. right? And when you were 18, yeah. you moved here for school and your family followed? They came much later. They came, you know, eight years later. So I came on my own. And um, and then from the stand-up, it just went into writing. And then from the writing, it segued to acting. Because I was writing on a show where they were like, we want all our writers to act. And I thought that acting wasn't such a, um, I just didn't realize how creative it was. Yeah. And so I did it, and I was like, this is so much fun. <laughs> and so that's when I sort of decided I would try and do it. And what was the first thing you did? The first thing I acted in that I wrote for was a show called Michael and Michael Have Issues on Comedy Central mm -hmm. that lasted, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be my life. This is going to be great. Six episodes. <laughs> Six episodes. Six is my lucky number. Yeah. But I was, is it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, it was, it, I mean, you know, I wish that show had gone on, but it really, 
It's been, I've been like in the right place at the right time over and over and over, you know? But, yeah. but like auditioning for Wonder Woman, what was that? Was it like, a, it must have been a lot, right? Uh, it was weird because I didn't know they were auditioning me for Wonder Woman. So I knew I was auditioning for this secret project. They just would like come in and she has a magic lasso and she's from no, the No, nothing. No, I okay. didn't get, like, I got <laughs> scenes from Palm Fiction. Really? To, to, for the auditions. Um, and then, like, I think that really one week before I did the camera test with Ben, it's like, what? Go they told me that they wanted me to fly to LA and do the camera test. I was like, great, I will, but what? What is it? What is it? Like, yeah. they were like, it's wonderful. And my agent was like, you don't know? They didn't tell you yet. I'm like, oh, no. So who knows? Like, can knows someone just you. say something? Yeah. And then Zack Snyder, our director, um, called me and said uh, that it was for Wonder Woman. I, I was, oh my God! I'll How exciting! So I just watched it again. I love, I love Wonder Woman. I saw it when it first came out, and then I watched it again. Um, what I really love about it is that it's a lot of different types of stories at once. It's a fish out of water story, right. and it's very funny. And your character in it, the arc is so interesting because you go from someone who's sort of an innocent, but you would think you'd traditionally go from innocence to disillusion, but you you don't do that. At the end, you're still very hopeful. Yeah. You just have a more complicated understanding of humanity. Exactly. But but you still have a lot of hope. Yeah. You don't you don't turn hopeless. So so um, what was it? How was it playing that? Like the, the comedy and doing all the... the, the uh... It was great. I think that once you work... Like for us actors, it's like you, when you were a writer, you felt like being an actor is, is you know, not that creative. Because right. when you're the writer, you're like, you're the god, right? You create everything. Right. You, you get to decide about anything. And with Wonder Woman, I felt like I had... Um, a really good script, and then I was working with really incredible people that had the same vision as I did. So Patty Jenkins, my director for Wonder Woman, the one and only, she's amazing. If you ever get a chance to work with her, go for it. Yeah, sure. Um, but she's she she and I were like shoulder to shoulder, and and we both felt that like this is an opportunity to create something special because there's something about this genre that's always been looked down because yeah. of the spectacle and, right. you know, it's, it's, it's sci-fi in a way. And we felt like this is an amazing device that we can use. Many, many people are going to watch this movie probably. So it's either we just settle and do an entertaining movie or we use this device, this vessel of Wonder Woman with all of its legacy, and we say something good about the world. Yeah. Because also, especially nowadays, <laughs> the world yeah. is not in its greatest you know, place. And, and I think that movies are a, a way of escapism. Can you say escapism? Yes. Like when we want to, yeah? Yeah. And also, if you use it right, it's a way to make people think and wonder and question and be inspired. Right. And if you find a way to, to, you know, tell a story in a way that will make people, like you said, feel hopeful or yeah. better, that's, that's an amazing thing. We need to help these people. We have to stay on mission. <laughs> the next safe crossing is at least a day away. What are we waiting we for? We cannot leave without helping them. These people are dying. This is not something you can cross. It's not possible. So what? So we do nothing? No, we, do, we are doing something. We are. We just, we can't save everyone in this war. Steve, Steve. I think what you said was very interesting because sometimes, you know, when you're trying to certain things you believe and you think the world um, needs to look at something differently, the easiest thing to do is just to say that, but I don't think that's as effective. I think what is effective is, exa is exactly what you're saying, which is you, you need to sort of hide it under yeah. escapism. Yeah, and like and, diffuse and, it and yeah. diffuse it in and a way that fun. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, you can't directly preach to people, I think. No. I think you have to um, just sort of make stuff, make art that has those ideals in it and trust that people are smart enough to, to connect those dots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that the way Petty conducted everything, you know, brought it to where it is now because she managed to 
give some and then take and pull yeah. back and then give some more and I don't know, I think I, I admire her. But let's talk about you. <laughs> um, so how did you, like, I know that I was so surprised when I did the research about you to read that it's The Big Sick is based on your true story about you meeting your wife and yeah. how did it all come, like, how did you come, how did you, how do, how do you write a comedy about your wife's coma. <laughs> it's, it's oh my thing. God, it, it's, it's, it's daunting, it's scary, you know, but I knew like, so we'd lived through this experience that was very, very difficult for all of us. It was very traumatic and it did not feel funny, but it was, it had been a few years and it sort of started getting in my head before it got in my wife's head. I was like, I think we have to try and make a movie out of this. Um, because you try and, you know, when you try and write from stuff that's important to you, um, and you, you acted in something and you said something with your movie that was important to you, I feel like you have to come from that place. Right. And so doing, writing our movie, it was the same thing. I was like, the things that are important to me are all in this story. And only we can tell this story, because no, this hasn't happened to anybody else. There's two people that it's happened to. Exactly. And we have to do it. So I sort of started thinking about it as a movie and thinking about it as a comedy because as we were talking about earlier, it's easier to sort of get your ideas into something that's entertaining and not preachy or, yeah. you know, I call them medicine movies. There are certain movies that are very like serious and that's just not the kind of, I love those movies, but that's not the kind of movie I wanted to make. So I'd met Judd Apatow and he was like, uh, do you have any ideas? And I, I prepared a bunch of ideas, but I went in knowing that this was the one that he was gonna, because his is always about truth and comedy. So I went in and I pitched all my supernatural sci-fi ideas and, and I was like, and then also my, my girlfriend at the time was in, she went into a coma for eight days and I hung out with her parents and he was like, let's, let's do that. And I was like, yeah, I think oh, so. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, we got it. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, you know, but that's the challenge. No, but I agree that in extreme yeah. situations is, is when the humor really saves you. I think so. Even I, though I still think it's super complicated. You've got to be so sensitive and there's such a fine line. There really is. Well, there is, but the advantage we had was we had lived through it. So we knew yeah. where we could put in the comedy and still have it feel like, like it felt to go through that experience, you know? Um, so we knew if we wrote a joke that was like that, like crossed that line, that broke the reality, we knew like, oh, that doesn't, that it's doesn't feel authentic. right. Yeah. But it's also, in a way, that kind of writing and acting. For me, acting through those kind of those moments again was, in a way, therapy for me. Because yeah. it was like, yeah, I get to healing. do this again, but I get to have control over it, yeah. and I get to have power over it. So this, these events don't have power over me. Now I have power over them. Yeah. What's my stance on 9-11? Anti. It was a tragedy. I mean, we lost 19 of our best guys. Huh? That was a joke, obviously. And so I think the writing of that was... How a, long after it happened? Five years after it happened, we started writing it. And I wanted to, I wanted to act in it because it was obviously, you know, something... I wanted to challenge myself. I'd only ever done comedy acting. I'd never done anything dramatic. And I knew that this was a way to sort of have a base of comedy, but really go to places that I hadn't gone to as a performer. Yeah. It was really exciting. And how was playing, you know, uh, your love story, but with someone else? Well, well see, so, so then I approached preparation for the acting of the movie the way I would approach any, I, I wasn't like, I'm playing myself. I was like, this is a part. Yeah. I've written it, so I know the part really well, but I need to, uh, find, you know, find the different levels, probably the same way that you approached Wonder Woman, which is like she starts in this place, and then she learns this, and she learns this, and then she ends up here. That's sort of how I approached it. Um, and so then with the relationship with uh, Emily in the movie, I wasn't trying to recreate the relationship I have with my wife. I was like, this is a new person, this is a new character, have a relationship with this person. So that's sort of what uh, that's sort of how I approached it, but then in the doing of it, it really felt a lot closer to some of the real events than I, than I thought it was going to. Um, like when? Excuse me? Like when? 
like, you know, a lot of the hospital stuff. Yeah. Like, I approached it like I'm acting in a movie, but as I was walking down that hall, wondering if she's okay or not, it sort of felt like it really took me back because the smell of the hospital and all. Yeah. It really took me back to how it felt back then, wondering Oof. how she's doing. Yeah, it, it was really... It was a really beautiful and satisfying experience. Um, so how was it for you playing a female superhero? I mean, we haven't seen too many of those, and, and it's, it's absurd that it took us this long I to know, get right? to a major female uh, superhero blockbuster hit. That's also a great movie. I can relate to what you said before about being at the right place at the right time. Um, so I think that this movie, these type of movies are overdue. Like we need to yes. make more a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> and I was just the right, you know, the opportunity came and I was ready and I was there when it happened and I got lucky. Um, for me, like there was such an importance. I'm going to say I think Wonder Woman got lucky to have you, but keep oh, going. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, um, <laughs> For me, it's, I never, you know, I did, I got Wonder Woman and like when things happens in life, yeah. you never stop and you're like, wow, I know. Mm, that's, that's right. you're like, you go with the flow and, and there she yeah. is. Yeah. So I think that it, I, I was thrown away when, when I saw the movie for the first time and there was this uh, battle scene with all the Amazons and the horses twirling swords and looking so amazing. And I got so emotional and I didn't understand why. And after the movie, I was thinking about it and it was, and you, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you can even understand this feeling, but it was the first time for me as a woman, a girl, a female, that I saw a vision, a visual thing, an image of strong women that are beautiful and confident and can take care of themselves. Like, it was so, it, 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 I was shocked by it. Yeah. And then I was more shocked by the fact that I was never, that I never saw anything like that. Right. I and mean, being a mother of two, because when I grew up, like, you see the guys, you see the men, which is great. Like, right. we should, but we should also see that, yeah, you know? Yeah, sometimes you don't realize what, what's been missing until you see the thing that's been missing. And I you're was like, like oh, why yeah, am I so emotional? Yeah. They're just riding on horses. But then I was like, it's the first time I saw something that is so strong and like, I don't know, but being a mother of two daughters, I'm thinking to myself that, wow, this is important. Like, just the fact that we're bringing to life something that is that, you know, yeah. strong women. It's so, you know, w w with everything that everyone are talking about, you know, everything that's going on in Hollywood and sexual harassment and women empowerment and there's always the women empowerment conversation, but they, it, there cannot be women empowerment if women don't have this visual in their, you know, in their subconsciousness, and if men don't have it either. Right. You know, because it's right. as important for boys and men to see that a woman can be super great. Of course. Um, how does it feel for you to be probably the most famous uh, person in Pakistan. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, you know what, this is funny. Like I, I really was like, so I was feeling like pretty good. You know, I was like, oh, I'm maybe the most famous Pakistani person in America or the most successful. But there's a person from my class, from my high school no. in Pakistan who has two Oscars. She made two short documentaries and won two Oscars. So I'm like, <laughs> most famous person from Pakistan. I'm not even the most famous person from my high school, from my year in That's high school. That's awesome. Oh my yeah, God, what are the chances? Yeah, what are the odds? But it's, it's strange to be in a position, you know, um, where there aren't that many South Asian people who are represented in pop culture. So I do feel this pressure to represent a group of people that I don't feel I'm qualified to represent. Yeah, because um, I think immediately once you become famous, there's this, 
you know, it goes without saying that you have to hold the flag of yeah. the nation. And I like, know, but it's, I, know. I don't, I don't, I'm not the guy. Yeah. I'm not the right guy. I saw somebody on, you know, some people will be like, uh, why is it this guy? I'm like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I agree with you. Why is it me? It shouldn't be. But I try, I know that whether I want to or not, just the fact that there aren't that many South Asian people represented in pop culture, I know that whether I want to or not, I do represent. A group and so I try and do the best I can but I think ultimately I can only tell my story I, know. Yeah. I can't really tell the story of everybody from that part of the world because everybody has a different story so yeah. I think what we need is just representation we just need more South Asian people telling their stories we need more South Asian women telling their stories we need I, I would love to see more South Asian gay people telling their stories yeah. um, and and I think that's really the only way you can represent a whole breadth of experience, you know. Um, so, so I, I try and do the best that I can, but I also understand that I'm, I'm inadequate. Um, no one. Don't say that. No, I, I, I think mean, that. Like, no one. I think that you're can... a beginning. I mean, you're a big part of their representation right now. Of course, there's room for more, yeah. and of course, there's, you know, other people. Yeah, uh, with other different stories, yeah. but like you're you're doing something that is is groundbreaking. For oh, them. thank you. Kumail, is that you? Yeah. Emily's Kumail. Yeah. Hey. Hey. That's me, Terry. Okay. What sort of roles have you did you play in the past? You know, I did in the beginning when I started auditioning. First of all, I've seen how far, and there's a long way to go, but I've seen how far this industry has come. In the type of parts, at least for, for brown men, the type of parts from 10 years ago to now, I see the difference, right? I mean, there have been a, a bunch of performers who've sort of broken down, and there's still a long way to go. Right. And so I did play certain parts that probably on paper were a little stereotypical or something, but I always tried to do something with them that was specific, that was more than what their description was. And I was lucky to always work with people who wanted that too, who yeah. always wanted to sort of... So it's not a cookie cutter, okay, now I'm doing that, yeah. Right, right. I always tried to bring some sort of history to the character or some sort of, you know, there were funny parts or try and find some joke about them that had nothing to do with where they were from or what they looked like. It, yeah. was, it was something specific. To make them more universal to the world. Everyone yeah, can. yeah, yeah. And to make them, honestly, to make them funnier because comedy has to come from the unexpected. Comedy is hard. Comedy uh, is like, people you, don't, don't... Did you have a good time hosting SNL? Can I ask you that? Oh my God. We host, you hosted, so then I hosted. It was, I was saying yes to it before I even understood what I was getting myself into. Uh, it's no, there's no way to know what you're oh getting into because it's so strange. It was, it was, it was so, it was the, uh, pr probably the craziest week I've ever had in my life. They all loved you, by the way, because I was there the week after and they were like, Gal was so nice. Oh, really? Yeah, they loved you. <laughs> um, yeah, I paid them lots of money to say that, but because they knew we were going to do that. So I to, <laughs> no. Um, no, but it, it was great, you know, I was so impressed by everyone over there. This is like such an oiled machine. They work so fast and yeah. everything just happens. It's like yeah. magic. Um, I was li like literally just there in the eye of the storm and just like oh, yeah. <sighs> trying You're to catch my breath right. and talk. Uh, but it was an amazing experience and it's like working with the best of the best. How was it for you? You must I had have a, loved it. I did. I really, really loved it. I had such a good time. I sort of went in, you know, when I first heard they wanted me to do it, I said yes, and I got very nervous. And then a couple of days later, I decided, you know what? I'm just going to have fun. Yeah. I'm not going to be nervous. I yeah. decided to just have fun. And then I did. I had, I had the best time. And like you said, it really is. You're sort of strapped in, and you're going on this ride, and you sort of have to trust the people around and you. let go. Yeah, you have to let go. Yeah. That's is it, what it is, is there more pressure doing SNL when you're a, a comedian? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but then I also think you, you know, for me, I've done a lot of live performance, so I had, I yeah. knew that 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 wasn't so different for me. Yeah, but there is a little more pressure, I think, to you know, you you sort of have to be 
you know, I, I think if somebody's a big sort of action movie star, uh, they can go on, and just the expectations are different, you know. Yeah. But I thought you were really, really great. Thank I really you. Loved I thought watching you were hilarious. You. Oh, oh thank God. you. But going back to what you were saying earlier, you know, getting, I feel very privileged to get to play uh, as a brown man a kind of part that we haven't really seen in American pop culture too much, and I think the answer is just that we have to show that there's no one real image of brown people you know I think I, I feel like sometimes here you get you sort of everybody gets lumped into the same group and I think the only way to sort of change that perception because I think pop culture really drives people's perception yeah of, because it's very easy to go and and, and label yes. like everyone by their yeah right right so so I feel you know we wanted to just tell our story but but it's been interesting that it sort of you see a brown guy in a rom-com, and that's something you haven't seen as much. And we, we hadn't really thought of that as being one of the reasons we were doing the movie. You know, we just wanted to tell our story. But I think seeing brown people in different contexts in America is just going to show people, like, well, there's no real type of... Exactly. They're just people, and they're, exactly. they occupy like everyone all different else, worlds. And they have yeah. stories that everyone can relate to, and they're just normal like everyone else. Right. And special like everyone yeah. else. My know? wife wanted to have a, uh, a, a website called Muslims Having Fun, and it's just pictures <laughs> of like Muslim people eating like popsicles or like riding roller coasters. <laughs> you don't see that so yeah. much, you know? Yeah. So you have like, I mean, the, you, you got to play this really powerful, awesome female superhero. Um, and so you must have such an interesting and exciting fan base. There must be so many oh, people who are so... It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Have you had like great, I'm sure you've had like great encounters had, with fans. I had many. I get so, I, I get very like... I get really emotional and excited when it's little kids. Yes, of course. Um, and you see, like, to them, I'm not Gal. To them, I'm like, I'm Diana, I'm Wonder Woman. Yeah. And they're like, the look in their eyes with that. Um, no, I had I had a bunch. And it's funny how, how this movie was um, so broad. Like, touched yeah. different people, different ages, different right. cultures, different, you know. I got photos from... <laughs> people that I work with or friends that their grandparents went to see it yeah. and with their wheelchair and everything. So it's been really overwhelming. Right. And I, I think that I'm right now like in SNL in the eye yeah. of, of the storm and, yeah. I'm, and I enjoy it and I, and I appreciate the amazing feedback. But I, th I think that it's gonna take me time to really digest and realize what's happening right now. Right. Um, but it's 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 really really incredible, and people are so incredible for coming, you know, to come and share their feelings and be yeah. super open and positive. It's like, yeah, it's, I'm getting yeah. emotional just No, I'm telling I you, I'm very grateful. Two of you with the little girl dressed as Wonder Woman. How beautiful <laughs> that you got to like. She got to see that scene of all these you know powerful women on horses in this epic superhero battle. But they're all like powerful women. Like you said, she must have seen that. And to her, for you, that was such a novel image. And to her, that's going to be normal, which is really Which I love. Stunning. And that's what I started to say before. Having two girls, I can only hope that this is not just a trend. And now because we did well in the I box office, it's going to be, you know. I hope that there's going to be, you know, more female-led stories that everyone can enjoy because at the end of the day I enjoyed so many male-led yes. stories yeah. so I think like we were talking about representation so you know in on earth there's 50 50 men yeah. and women right yeah and it should be the yeah. same in, on, on film on TV on everywhere yeah and um, I think I think you know you're exactly right because uh, people want to see stories from different perspectives. The fact that your movie was successful should not be a surprise because I think 
I don't think people just want to see themselves on screen. I think they also want to see stories from other people. So like you said, my favorite movies have, some of my favorite movies have like straight white men as the leads, and that's not what I am, but, but I enjoy those stories, and I, you have to trust that other people will enjoy your stories, even if they're, it's, it's good to see yourself on screen, but it's also good to see other people on screen, yeah. and I think that that's financially successful. I mean, your movie was so successful. I, I, I hope that Hollywood learns that female-led action movies are, are good, good for the box office. Yeah, yes. that's it. Yeah. yeah.